Hi, I'm Kenny Yates. Welcome to Hold the Hoop. And this is a regular weekly message. And today's message is entitled, Rejoice and Be Glad. There are many words translated rejoice in the scriptures. Rejoice appears almost 240 times from my count. Some words pretty much have the same meaning as the other, but this word, sama, is mentioned 154 times and over 60 of those times, it is the instruction or the command to rejoice. And many times with the phrase, they shall rejoice. That's over one third. That's almost 40% of the time that it, that it is a call or a command to rejoice. That tells me that rejoicing is very important. Prayer is extremely important, but prayer, palau, is only mentioned 84 times, and only two of those times are instructions or commands to pray. Whereas we're instructed to rejoice over and over and over again in the Old Testament. We can rejoice without praying, but we can't pray without rejoicing, either by giving thanks or by declaring who God is and what He has done for us. We're always, always, always celebrating His goodness because God is good and He's good all the time. It doesn't necessarily have to be an ecstatic shouts of joy, and, but it's joy nonetheless. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. I want you to turn with me, please, to the scripture found in Joel chapter 2, verse 23. Be glad, O children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given the early rain for your vindication. He has poured down for you abundant rain, the early and the latter rain as before. This is a commandment from the Lord, and this is a commandment for the children of Zion to be glad and to rejoice. When the Lord said through the prophet Joel, be glad and rejoice, he was saying, be grateful and be thankful for what I have given you. For apart from me, you can do nothing. You have all of this because I have given it to you. And if you are thankful, I will give you even more. So I want us to break this down. Let us break this down. The word glad is the Hebrew word gil, which means be glad, be joyful. That is, be in a state of an attitude or feeling of favorable circumstances. With note, this joy may be expressed in song, shouts, or even joyous shrieks and calls. They were to begin rejoicing outwardly because of their favorable circumstances, even before they felt it inwardly, because in this instance, it hadn't manifested as yet. They hadn't seen it as yet. But I don't feel like it, Pastor. I'm not just feeling joyful today. Today is not a good day for me. Oh, my feelings are hurt. I don't feel like rejoicing right now. You don't even know what I've been going through. Maybe tomorrow, but not today. Today is just not a good day. I'm not feeling glad at all. God is not overly concerned about how you got your feelings hurt. He wants you to rejoice and be glad. Rejoice and be glad. God does not say be happy because happiness is based on your circumstances, whereas joy is what God gives in good times and in bad times. The problem, you see, with happiness is it can be fleeting or even misleading. What I mean is this, sometimes some people will smile outwardly 
and even laugh outwardly while all the while on the inside they are troubled they have thoughts of suicide worries concerns they are burdened with the day's fear the day's doubt they're burdened down with a load of care while joy gives God's peace even in the midst of the storm it is the joy that will take you through tribulation. It is that joy which surrounds us even in the face of death. It is the joy that changes our attitude even when gloom is hanging over us. It gives us hope, optimism, confidence, and a positive outlook on life, no matter what. It is the joy that will soften our hearts to offer more love and personal grace. It is the joy that strengthens us for the long, hard journey that lays ahead. It is the joy that changes our perspective. It is the joy that lets us view the world through God's eyes. It is the joy that gives us that shalom peace of God. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Praise the Lord for the joy of the Lord, that joy that he gives us. If you want to experience the joy of the Lord, you must begin with celebrating, even when there is nothing to celebrate or nothing to celebrate about. If you celebrate God, a spirit of thankfulness will overshadow you and joy will enter your heart. Then there is the command to rejoice. That is the Hebrew word, Sama, meaning be glad, delight in, be elated. That is, have a feeling of attitude of joy and happiness with a possible focus of making an outward expression of that joy. Please understand that joy, that, that God commanded his people, even before they felt it inside, they were to express it outwardly, guilt. Then they were to rejoice inwardly, summer, to the point that it matched their outward expression of joy. As you know, there's a little thing called equilibrium. Equilibrium is basically the state of balance or the adjustment of conflicting desires. In other words, when your inside do not match your outside, you have an imbalance in your equilibrium. Your body will then work to adjust the one to the other. And usually, the one with the strongest emotion or the one that you push the hardest will be the dominant one. For example, suppose you're feeling good inside, but you pretend to be upset and your face now shows it. Your words tell of it, and you act like you're upset, although you're not upset. You just act like you're upset. Everybody thinks you're upset. Well, soon your inside will begin to match your outside since it is your dominant emotion. It's the one that you're pushing the hardest, and soon you will begin to feel angry or upset, and you won't even know why, just for no reason at all. Now you're angry, you're upset. That is your equilibrium adjusting to balancing the two, your inward and your outward. And you know, it works vice versa. If you pretend to be glad, if you pretend to be joyous on the outside, then the inside will match. That is why God commanded them to be glad, in other words, to begin celebrating with song and with clapping of hands. Begin to celebrate with shouts of elation and with whatever other outward expression of celebratory joy there may be. Even before they begin to feel it inwardly, they're to express it outwardly. See, expressing it outwardly and in due time, the inward will match the outward and you will begin to feel the joy of the Lord and the heart will rejoice and be thankful and be grateful for all the Lord has done. Because his goodness 
is forever. Celebrate the goodness of the Lord. Now, this is the real interesting part. If you do a deeper word study on the word summer, you will find that it means to beam the countenance. You can only beam what is inside. You don't beam what's outside in, but what's inside to out. See, out of his belly flows rivers of living water. Out of his belly. Now, let's draw some parallels or some comparisons. Look with me at Genesis chapter 4, verse 6. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. It's the King James Version. God asked Cain, why have your countenance fallen? In other words, God was asking Cain, say, Cain, why have you stopped rejoicing? All you have to do is do what's right and you'll be okay. But if you do not do what is right, then sin will try to overcome you. But you must overcome him. You must rule over him. So rejoice that you do not leave the door open for the enemy to squeeze in and change your beaming of the countenance. Turn now to Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 2. Wherefore the king said unto me, Why is thy countenance sad, seeing thou art not sick? This is nothing else but sorrow of heart. Then I was very sore afraid. King James Version. Nehemiah's brother, along with some other men, had just returned from Jerusalem and had told uh, Nehemiah that the gates and the walls of Jerusalem were broken down and burned and the, and the place was in shambles. And the remnant there in the province who had survived the exile was in great trouble and shame. It broke Nehemiah's heart and his countenance changed from one of joy to one of mourning. What was happening was he was expressing outwardly what he was feeling inwardly. His equilibrium was in balance. Now watch this. Countenance is the outward showing of God's love that is in you and in me, which is expressed on our faces through rejoicing. It is our way of expressing thankfulness to God, our Father, for his numerous blessings on us. It is our offering to him. It is our act of worship to him. And now, this is the exciting part. Rejoicing is directly related to the harvest. Every feast and every offering, every harvest time, and every sheep sharing time was to be accompanied with gladness and with rejoicing. Rejoice because the Lord your God has made you glad and be blessed with, he has blessed you with good things to enjoy. Rejoice and be glad because the Lord your God has dealt wondrously with you, meaning he has given you a bountiful blessing to enjoy. Show thanks. For it. So remove that frown from your face. Get rid of that downcast face. Look up and rejoice because the Lord our God reigns. Praise his holy name. This gladness and this rejoicing are connected to post-harvest and post-harvest blessings. You see, it was always after they had brought the offering to God. Or it was after they had harvested their grains and harvested their fruits that they were to rejoice because of the bounteous blessings that God had given them. 
because he had provided them with such great provisions. But if you look through, God always instructed his people to rejoice after they had received the great blessings, no matter what it was. They were to rejoice and be, and be glad. But in Joel chapter 2, let us look at God's instruction to his people. Be glad, O children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he has given the early rain for your vindication. He has poured down for you abundant rain, the early and the latter rain as before. There is a whole lot that is going on there. So let us unpack this. The first thing God tells his people to do is be glad. As you remember, this Hebrew word gil means to be in a state of an attitude or feeling of favorable circumstances. This joy may be expressed in, in song, shouts, or even joyous shrieks and calls. So they were to make merry with music and singing and shouts and dancing. They were to have a great celebration showing their appreciation and thanks to the Lord their God. The next thing they were instructed to do was rejoice in the Lord your God. Now this word sama, as you remember, means be glad, delight in, be elated. That is, have a feeling or attitude of joy and happiness with a possible focus of making an outward expression of that joy, that joy that you're feeling. So it was instructions to celebrate inwardly first so that it would manifest or come in agreement with the outward celebration of gladness. Usually, I have stated earlier, usually these two are post Blessings celebration. It was after they had received the blessings that they were to gild, be glad, and sama, rejoice. But here, God is telling them to do it now, do it now, do it now. So let us look at the reason why. Just one line we're going to read, just one line. Joel chapter 2, verse 23. For he has given the early rain for your vindication. Here, God uses the past tense. He says, I have given you. It's already done. So celebrate. Celebrate it. It's done. I want you to understand that when God has said he has given you something, nothing can stop that something from coming to pass. Nothing can prevent it from coming to pass. It is on its way. And if it's on its way, it will manifest itself. It will make it to your door. You don't have to worry. It is like what Isaiah prophesied about Jesus. He said he was wounded for your transgressions. Now realize Jesus hadn't died for our sins as yet when Isaiah said that. He hadn't paid the price for our healing as yet when Isaiah said that. He hadn't taken the chastisement of a peace upon him as, as yet. But still, God said, he was, meaning it's already done. You can use it. You can claim it. You can proclaim it because it is done. When God says something, it's like it already happened. Even if it doesn't matter or hasn't manifested itself as yet, it is done. So it hadn't manifested itself. Jesus hadn't come as yet. So his, his threefold work of grace hadn't been accomplished in the physical as yet, but it was already done and nothing would be able to stop it. Not Satan, not King Herod with infanticide, not the Pharisees wanting to stone him, not even the devil with the temptation in the wilderness. Nothing but nothing could stop the prophecy from coming to pass. This is how it is here. God said, I, had, I have given it to you. You may not see it. You may not feel it. 
You may not even realize it. You may not understand it. You may not recognize it. You may not appreciate it, but you must appreciate it. So be glad and rejoice. Do you notice or did you notice that be glad was listed first and then rejoice second? Because being glad is the outward and it goes inward. And the rejoice is the inward that comes out to me, the outward, and they mix and they make one. In other words, it must manifest in the physical or in the natural before it can manifest in the spiritual or in the supernatural. Those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth, in the natural and in the spirit. See, I want you to notice something in our scripture verse here. So I want us to read the scripture again so that we can bring all of this together and form a big picture. Joel chapter 2, verse 23. Be glad, O children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given the early rain for your vindication. He has poured down for you abundant rain, the early and the latter rain as before. Why did God tell the, the children of Zion to rejoice? Because he had given them the early rain and poured down abundant rain. He has given them the early rain and the latter rain as before. They hadn't seen it as yet, right? But it was already done for them and God wanted them to act like it was so. He wanted them to act so that they could usher in that blessing into being. They needed to do something in the physical that the spiritual might manifest itself. Look at this. What does rain represent in scripture? Here, rain represents God's blessings and favor and provision and the ability to provide a great harvest. I want you to notice that there are three different kinds of rain. It's the abundant rain, it is the early rain, and it is the latter rain. And all three of these rains are different one from another. Look at the abundant rain. Abundant rain speaks of the blessing of the Lord, which flows, overflows in abundance. It's over and beyond. It is the present blessing of the Lord. The word used is the Hebrew word gesem, meaning the natural occurrence of water in the earth, which gives abundant produce, has the associative meaning of destruction and flooding when in excess. Remember what Jesus said in Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be poured into your lap. This is Jesus' description of Gesem, the abundant, overflowing blessings of the Lord. And that is what God was telling his people that he had already sent for them in Joel chapter 2. Now, the second type of rain that God said he had sent them was Moray. The autumn rains, or the former rains, that is, the early rains that were from late October to early December. This kind of rains represent the past blessings that you should have had, but you missed it. Because you were either in the wrong place, had the wrong attitude, or was acting with the wrong behavior. It is the missed blessings that God sent you that you should have had if you were not disobedient, if you were in the right place. He is saying, I am giving you a second chance, my people. I have already sent you those blessings that I sent you earlier. I'm sending them again. Those blessings that you missed out on, I'm sending them again. So be ready and rejoice. Be glad. 
Because I'm sending you a second chance. I'm giving you a second chance for those missed blessings. So now, here's your second opportunity to receive what I had in store for you earlier. That's what God is saying. And yes, God says, I love you that much that I would do that for you. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 14 and 15. He will give the rain for your land in its season, the early rain and the latter rain, that you may gather in your green and your wine and your oil. And he will give grass in your fields for your livestock, and you shall eat and be what? Be full. Rain is always connected to the increase. The verse says that he will give the rain for their land in its season. But look at Joel chapter 2. God does not care about the season. He has set the blessing in season and out of season. Why? Because now is the acceptable year of the Lord. Jesus said that this is the time, this is the season that the Holy Spirit has come upon him for. Luke chapter 4, verse 19, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Matter of fact, look, that is so good. I want to read the whole thing. Luke chapter 4, verse 18 and 19. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to, to captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Does the enemy have all have you all bound up? Is he wreaking havoc in your life? Please understand that the early rains have come. Your freedom has been handed to you. Your get out of jail free card is in your hand. Your freedom is yours, so take it. Jesus has fulfilled the promise of the past missed blessings. He has proclaimed your liberty and freed you from oppression. He has paid the high price. He has torn down the strongholds in your life and has set you free. You are a new creation in the Lord. The old has passed away and behold, the new has come. Does the spirit of infirmity plague you? Has it have you bound up? By his stripes, you are healed. It's lack of finances weighing you down. It is the Lord who gives the, you the ability to gain wealth. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18. This is your year of jubilee. Shout it. Proclaim it. Now receive it. Receive all that the Lord has for you. Be blessed in the Lord. God's blessings rest upon you. The next reign is the latter reign. Malchus. It is the spring rains, that is, the latter rains that, are, that falls in March through April on our mo modern calendar. These rains are the future blessings that God has in store for you that will come in season and out of season. The more you rejoice and be glad, the more the blessings will flow. It is like that chorus that we used to sing. The windows of heaven are open. The blessings are flowing tonight. I've got joy, joy, joy in my heart since Jesus made everything right. I gave him my old tattered garments. He gave me a robe of pure white. And now I'm feasting on heavenly manna, and that's why I'm happy tonight. That's why we're happy, because God has blessed us with good things. He satisfies our mouth with good things, that our strength is renewed like the eagles. And we soar, we run, and are not weary. We walk and not faint. The scriptures tell us no good thing will he withhold from us. Listen to me. God is a good God. He's a good, good father. And he wants to bless you. He wants to bless me. He wants to bless your family. And he wants to bless my family with good things. His desire is to pour out his blessings on his family. We are his 
family, but because we've been grafted into the vine, and now we are children of the Most High God. So what father does not want to bless his children? How much more, how much more will God want to give you good things? Tell me, tell me if you can. Which one of you would withhold something good from one of your children? I would dare to say none, not one of you would withhold good things from your children. So how much more will God not withhold from us his blessings that he has paid such a high price to give us? But what is the key? The key is rejoice and be glad. Even when things are going all wrong, even when everything seems to be all mixed up, even when you can't see the light in your darkness, everything seems to be out of control. Please understand that it is not out of God's control. It's out of your control, but it's not out of God's control. So rejoice and be glad for great things he has done for you, even if you do not perceive it now. Even before the blessing or the harvest has manifested itself, begin to be glad. Begin and move right into rejoicing and begin to celebrate. Your healing isn't complete. Clap your hands and shout for joy anyway. Receive your healing. The Lord Jesus heals you. Your prayer has not shown up as yet. Dance and rejoice anyway. Your promise is still outstanding. Be joyful and rejoice all the same it doesn't matter it will show up your promotion or that business deal has it manifested sing and shout and clap your hands because it surely is on its way if god said it it is done period mic drop it's finished the enemy will try to make you feel foolish like michael tried to tried to embarrass King David. She tried to make him feel foolish and embarrass him because she saw him dancing with all his might before the servants got uh, in front of the servant girls. But he was dancing with all his might before God. It was his act of worshiping God. He was being glad and his gladness became rejoicing. He expressed it. Look at 2 Samuel chapter 6, 22. I will become even more undignified than this. I will be humiliated in my eyes. So when, when the devil tries to make you feel stupid or somebody in your family tries to, make, to, tries to embarrass you because you're shouting, you're, you're screaming, you're clapping your hands and you're rejoicing at a blessing that has not yet come, but you know that it's on its way and therefore you're ushering your blessing in, say this. I will become even more undignified than this. I will be humiliated in my own eyes as long as the Lord my God is lifted up. Just let God be praised and glorified because he has sent me the abundant rain, the early rain, and the latter rain. Praise his holy name. I want you to receive that word. You have received God has sent you the abundant rain. He has sent you the early rain, and he has sent you the latter rain. Blessings upon you. Blessings upon your family. This is what I want to ask you. Have you received that God sent rain? Those God sent rains. The abundant rain. The early rain. And the latter rain. They're yours. Reach out and take hold of them by faith. Ours is a religion of faith. Everything is about faith. By faith, we are saved. By faith, we are healed. By faith, we walk. By faith, we live and move and have our being. Because the Lord, our God, is for us. If you don't have that peace, but would like to have peace, Jesus can set you free. Or if you are in need of healing, Jesus Christ heals you. Be healed of that infirmity. Spirit of infirmity, we rebuke you now in the name and the authority of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Release 
that person now. Receive your healing. Jesus, the Son of the living God, healed you. If you need salvation, here's what I want you to do. I want you to repeat this prayer with me. Make it audible. Say it with your mouth. And believe it with your heart. And you will be saved. Say, Heavenly Father, forgive me of my sins. Help me to know that I am saved. For it is by faith that I am saved. So by faith, I receive your salvation right now. I receive eternal life. Help me to accept the abundant rain, the early rain, and the latter rains. Help me to receive and manifest them in my life by being glad, by rejoicing. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. What I want you to do is to buy yourself a Bible. Get a Bible. Get a highlighter. Read your Bible every day. Highlight those verses, those promises, those scriptures that are meaningful to you. Hide them away in your heart so that you might not sin against the Lord. Rejoice and be glad always. And as Paul said, again, I say rejoice. It's important to be glad. It's important to rejoice that you might usher in the blessings and the provision and the increase of the Lord. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate you. We love you and the Lord loves you more than I can even tell you. I'm Kenny Yates. This is Hold the Hope. Be blessed and stay blessed.